Welcome everybody to the Growing Wisconsin Readers Fall Webinar Series. Today's topic is 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten Program in Wisconsin. Today's webinar is scheduled from 1 o'clock to 2.15, so we've got a lot of content to cover and we hope to hear from you as participants in our chat box as we go along today. Also, if you happen to be watching today's recording at a later date, feel free to get in touch with me or any of the other presenters with any questions that you have regarding their material. My name is Tessa Michelson-Schmidt, and I'm the Public Library Youth and Special Services Consultant here at the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. I'm also the coordinator of the Growing Wisconsin Readers Early Literacy Initiative. And if you're unfamiliar with this initiative, it is a program that is specifically rooted in Wisconsin public libraries. And its main aim is to support the caregivers, the families, and the parents of young children with information about early literacy so that they can be more prepared for school in life. Our topic today is looking at 1,000 book programs. And this is something that has happened. These programs have really been taking place around the country for a while. But Wisconsin is a hot spot. And so we're going to hear from several different public libraries who have planned, launched, tweaked, revised, and celebrated their programs in their libraries. And so whether you as a viewer are starting out from scratch or looking to tweak your program, or just want more ideas about how you can enhance what you already have going on, we hope that this webinar will offer a lot for you. You may or may not be familiar with a Google map that exists showing 1,000 books programs across the country. Right now, I've zoomed in on Wisconsin. And this particular screenshot is taken from um, fall of 20. 13, when Growing Wisconsin Readers was first getting started, I did workshops around the state and mentioned this resource that was put together by Kathy Larson, one of our presenters today, at the Bloomer Public Library. And this is what it looked like in fall 2013. And this is what it looked like about a week ago when I updated my screenshot. So you can see that this program has really blossomed around the state. So this is something to keep in mind as we're going forward today and in the coming months. I do want to introduce our webinar presenters. You can see their names here on the screen. And you can also see the abbreviations for what library system they are part of. And as you can see, we have libraries and library systems from all across the state. And I'm so excited to hear from everybody here. We're going to start off with Chris from the Brilliant Public Library. And I'm so excited for her to share all of the details related to their wonderful program. And so at this point, I'm going to pass it off to you, Chris, and let you take it away. Thanks, Thanks Tessa. And welcome, everyone, to the webinar. Um, our 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program started in 2013. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, I'm at the director, but I also coordinate our youth programs and do sometimes door story time. So got my hand in, in that area as well as everything else in our library. Our library was established in 1928 with our current building built in 1973 with an addition in the 90s. Um, a little bit about Berlin. We have a population of 3148 in the last census with a service population around 7,800. We're located in Calumet County, which is part of Fox City. Our collection is around 30,000 items. Our circulation, 2014, 70, about 74,000. We had 236 different children's programs and with 44, 75 children attending. Um, a little background on our youth programs. We do two story time sessions a year and a summer session. We have a monthly free play program for the kids, which we do in conjunction with story time. And then we have um, a parenting collection and a toy library, which is called SEEDS, which was developed by our schools. And SEEDS stood for Stimulating Early Education and Developmental Skills. You can see the bag on our picture here. Um, the color-coordinated bag for each age group of the toys. 
Uh, we were thinking about a thousand books program and weren't quite sure how we were going to do it. We looked at some of the information that was out there on the state and the web. And when the idea of the mini grant came up, um, and we decided to apply for a mini grant, we wrote the grant and we received $250 to start the program. Now, that was in August of 2013. Basically, it gave us three months to develop and accomplish our objectives in the program. And at first, we thought it was, it was a rather quick turnaround time, but for us, it was a great way to get the program off the ground. Um, in our LSTA grant, this is what we set out as our objectives, and then further, this is the outreach that we would provide. I'm not going to go through those right now. Um, the grant work, once we started on the program, we looked at the program literature, and in particular, with Marge Luck Waters at La Crosse at had developed. We liked a lot of her ideas, the idea that they didn't have to necessarily check the books out from your library, that they didn't have to, that they could read a book more than once and count it. Uh, we copied and modified the reading logs that were provided on the template using you know, our logos and things. And one of the things, at this point, we didn't have a logo and we decided we needed a logo. And we were trying to figure out what, what, what would be a good logo. And we took a little inspiration from our library. We have this beautiful cricket sculpture done by a local artist in front of the library. And our city had just created its new logo. And we were thinking, how can we incorporate these type of things? Uh, we had a student, kind of artistic student, who created our um, cricket. And we created our um, logo for a thousand books program, which you see right here. We then decided to develop a tree for our entryway. And on the tree, each child would be represented by a leaf. And, um, their picture would be optional. Um, we developed a folder of materials. We kind of color coordinated with the green. And in our folder, we included all of the thousand books worksheets um, and a letter of introduction explaining the program. There was a leaf that they could take home and the one for the tree. And then we had some. Um, they included our Growing Wisconsin Readers brochure, and um, the library has an activity color, coloring book. So we gave that to each of um, the children when they signed up. We were looking at how we some type, you know, incentives to keep the kids run, keep the kids and the parents interested in the program. And so we came up with we didn't want anything real extravagant, but we thought. Um, you know, things book related, and what we decided was for every hundred, they would at least get a sticker, and we had really cool Eric Carl stickers, and there would be a sticker on their leaf. Um, we had, um, for every hundred, three hundred, five hundred, seven hundred, we had little things like book bags and pencils, and bookmarks, and then out of a thousand, they would get a book, a certificate, and an invitation to the annual party. Now. We've only been doing it a year. We haven't had that annual party yet, but it may be coming. Uh, our thousand books, the books, um, we thought they're, um, is because they're going to be going in kindergarten, we, a number of the books were, um, well, kindergarten or on us, I'm starting kindergarten. But what we realized was some of the kids finished a lot earlier, and so we get, also got some concept type books. And that's the certificate we created. Um, and actually, kind of an interesting thing out of it, our library actually developed its own logo using the Cricut. Um, our sign up for the program, we invited the parents of the young children to sign up. We sent invitations to all the daycares and preschools. We did a presentation at the preschool Head Start program. And what was really interesting is uh, one of the parents came that very evening to sign their child up. Our sign-up is very simple. On a cardboard card, we write the child's name and parent's name below it. Uh, the parent receives folder material. The child's name, first name is put on the leaf. And the parent or the child place the leaf on the tree. And by having them place it on the tree, it gives them a little more ownership. We do the same thing with the stickers. And then we file the cards alphabetically in a small box. And when they come in to report, they bring their sheet in. They've reached 100. We just mark 100, 200, 300, or wherever they are on the card and give them 
the corresponding stickers and things for that level. And like we said, it didn't take long. Little Amelia here had a thousand books. They were sure with their certificate. Um, as far as the LST gay grant, I want to do a little bit about how we did. We were able to visit all of our daycares. Uh, we send our program materials to the, all of the daycares. Um, and one of the things we also were able to send the Growing Wisconsin Readers information. Uh, we uh, de develop a library caregiver resource that so we were hoping to get a little bit of resource. Our program as well, what we felt was the Growing Wisconsin Readers was a really nice brochure that complemented our program materials so we didn't create a new thing per se. Um, we offered to provide story times to the daycares, and one of the story times, uh, daycares did take us up, and we're still doing story times there. And we continued our story time program. Um, and the outreach part of the grant, our um, story times in the library services area, we accomplished that. We partnered with a number of agencies, um, the preschool programs at, at our area school. Child care resource and referral um, unit. We and schedule story times and other information about our, our programs. Calumet County Health and Human Services as well. They have a number of clients that um, they refer to the library. Um, they had to start program in Manitowoc County. Um, as far as partnering with businesses or agencies to continue the program, we contacted several businesses and it wasn't a good time, but. Uh, we decided to go with our local foundation, and our local foundation did come through. Um, and we were able to distribute the growing readers and information about the Thousand Books program to our health and dental clinics. We had a um, kind of a natural partnership with these health clinics. We had written a number of health grants through the years, and which worked with these clinics and things, and so they had a lot of our materials. So there was, you know. It was very easy to work with them. And then as far as publicizing the grant, we used Facebook, newspaper articles, websites. When our first child reached a thousand books, we put publicity in the local papers and on Facebook. Our program funding for the grant, our LSDA grant, which was $250, actually paid for the materials, the folders, the colored paper, some of the incentives like stickers and book bags. Get us started, and then we approached some businesses and the, our area foundations about funding. And our Peters Foundation came through with a $2,000 grant, and another foundation was interested, but kind of needed more material, more information. And so we have them on the back burner. So once once our materials come low, that we can approach them again to continue the continuation of the program. So far, Chris, we've only heard Chris, this is Tessa, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, okay. But folks are having a little difficulty hearing you, so if there's any way that you could just speak a little louder on your end, I think that might help a little bit. Okay, I will try. How's this? That's great. Thanks, okay. Chris. Okay. With the program funding, we purchased around $550 worth of books, and um, we have, we'll probably be putting out another book order, but we're waiting to see how they do. Um, as far as the grant itself, accomplishments after it, we now are presenting weekly story times for our large daycare. Um, children from three of the different area daycares attended our summer story time sessions, and we have 92 children signed up for the program. We have um, uh, a thousand who are participating in the program. So far, 12. 12 have completed the program. I have 11 on here, but another one just completed it. And 18,300 books have been signed in. This is our tree today. And then we put another section where we highlight everyone who's completed the program over here. And it actually draws attention to those who are still working on it. And um, with our cricket sort of became come our symbol. We, we did a promotion at our historical society where they have community decorate the trees, and we did a cricket tree promoting our thousand books program. And there's my contact information. Great, then, Chris, that was a, that was a wonderful presentation, and we already have one question that's come up in the chat box from Catherine, who's asking specifically about 
for the books purchased for the library collection or to give away to families as incentives? They were purchased to give away to the family. So okay. every child who reaches out to get their own book. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. And um, I, th I think we will move on to our next uh, presenter, but keep in mind if you have other questions that come up, we will try to get to them at the end. But Chris, thank you so much for covering all of those details. And as you can see, even though Chris did have one of those mini grants for $250, that's, that's not a lot to just, just get things started. So I really appreciate seeing how things developed for you. Now we're going to move on to Jen Faith from the Kenosha Public Library, who's going to talk about how they've developed their program um, down there. So Jen, you can take it away. Thanks, Thanks Tessa. Tessa. Um, hi, this is Jen Faith. I am the head of youth services at the Kenosha Public Library. Um, we are located in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and we're halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee. Um, so um, we're in the Kenosha County Library System. And that is, uh, consists of Kenosha Public Library, which serves Eastern Kenosha County, and then the Community Library, which serves Western Kenosha County. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, Kenosha has a population of about 100,000. Um, and we have four locations and a bookmobile. So when we were getting ready to start our program, we were really looking for something that was very simple to get going so that all of our locations could participate. Um, so it was really about being as simple as we could. Um, so. Okay, so we, when we uh, applied for the mini grants that were available in 2013, um, we were really trying to look for ways to make the thousand books, um, to find a way to really make parents more involved in it. Um, so our program goals were to engage parents in creating a literacy-rich environment at home and reinforce their role as their child's first and best teacher. Um, another one of our goals was to increase um, the exposure to diverse titles. Um, so we're trying to highlight um, multicultural books and nonfiction books um, so that we're supporting the development of background knowledge and other pre-reading skills. Um, and then our last goal was to encourage sharing and enjoying books together, um, which is something that I think has really been a hallmark of Thousand Books programs across the country. Um, so we didn't want to lose sight of that part of it either. Okay, so our first year. We launched in January of this year. And the top is a picture of our tree when in March of 2014. Um, and you can see it's um, on the door of our developmental collection. Um, so we have toys that uh, families can check out. So this is kind of a good way for us to highlight that area. Um, it's a little dark and hard to see back there, so having the Grow a Reader tree really helps us kind of bring attention to that collection as well. Um, and then the bottom picture, that is our tree at the end of November of this year. So. Um, during our first year, we have about 450 that have signed up. Um, and we have had our first graduates. Um, so in August, we had a graduation ceremony and had 10 children that had finished the program by then. So um, we have a picture of our, of our graduates there next to our tree. Okay, so for our logs, um, uh, we have a youth services library assistant that had some graphic design background. So she was able to design um, the logo for us. So we kind of did a booklet for our logs. Um, and we try to make it really flexible for families. 
Um, so we have some families that write down every single title that they read because they want the, the keepsake part of it. And then we have others that just check mark as they go through the program. Um, and along the side of our logs, we kind of show their progress alongside a tree. And we have little reminders throughout to let them know when they can come in and get one of their incentives. Um, another part of our log is that we've done um, bookmarks for every 100 books and that have different early literacy tips. So I'll talk about those a little bit later. And we've done a registration card. Um, we wanted a really simple way to keep track of who is participating without having to keep detailed records. Um, since we were dealing with a lot of different staff signing people up at other locations, um, we wanted something that wasn't going to be constant recording. So we basically just take their contact information, and then when they finish the program, the other side of the registration card is an invitation to the graduation ceremony. So we end up giving those back. So we're not really keeping detailed records of where people are in the program and how many books. We're just kind of keeping track of when they sign up and then when they finish. And then for every 100 books that they read, they get um, a leaf sticker. So we have uh, the different numbered leaves, and then they can stick it on their tree on the front of their log when they get to that point. OK, so for the early literacy tips that we did, um, we really wanted to bring in some of the Every Child Ready to Read practices. Um, so for each. Um, bookmark for 100 books. Um, we give a suggestion for talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing. Um, and the way we designed that was kind of, we wanted the program to be something that kids age through. So for the 0 to 100, we did um, tips that would be good for infants and younger children. And we kind of change the audience as we went through. So when we were doing the 900 to 1,000, we were really aiming those tips for uh, a child ready to enter kindergarten. Um, so we really wanted to be giving parents ways that they could also support early literacy beyond just um, reading. Um, and then we also, um, like Chris did, we did use some of the um, Eric Carl um, things with the very ready reading program. Um, so we gave stickers away when they'd read 100 books. And then um, we um, have a lot of displays with uh, posters that are sharing sounds, sharing stories, and all of those things because we really wanted to be pushing the other early literacy things beyond um, just having a log that people um, keep track of. Okay, so for our incentives, um, we are really pushing our Grower Reader logo, which is sort of what we uh, have taken on as for our 1,000 books before kindergarten. Um, and we really wanted to tie in our incentives to that idea of growing. So at, at 250 books, we give them a packet of sunflower seeds. Um, at 500 books, we do a growth chart. Um, at 750 books, we do a book tote with the logo on it. And then at 1,000 books, um, we give away those incentives at the graduation party. So we do a whole ceremony, and they get a certificate. Um, and then they get an art smock with the logo on it and a book. Um, so this year, we just bought books specifically for the people that had finished. Um, so one of our goals in the future is to kind of find a way to, to purchase a larger amount of books. Um, um, another thing that we did um, to push the increasing exposure to different titles is we, we sort of had this shelf that wasn't really being used for anything. So we decided to take over that and use it to give book recommendations for people participating in the Grower Reader program. Um, so we chose things that really helped develop some of the early literacy skills that we were pushing in the bookmarks that we had in our logs. Um, so we did um, 
books with predictable storylines, uh, books with great vocabulary. Um, we did informational books. Um, we picked favorite authors, um, kid favorites, and we did concept books, multicultural books, and staff picks. Um, so this has been a really well used display, so it, it, it does require maintenance from us, but we do have to check in on it and, and add a lot of things to it. Um, but that's been a really good way to get people exposed to things that they wouldn't necessarily find just looking through our collection. Um, and then this slide, this, this sort of is something that worked really well for us and then something that didn't really turn out the way we had hoped. Um, we did get a lot of support from the community. Um, we are very lucky to have a close relationship with our local colleges. And uh, one of our local colleges, Carthage College, holds a CSUBAN every year. And it's a really popular event. Um, it's been going on for many, many years. And every year they choose uh, an early literacy project to fund. And so this past year, they selected our program um, as their early literacy project. So we um, got a lot of our funding from the money that they had raised. Um, so that was a really great event for us to be at as well, because we could really promote our program and sign people up. Um, so it was really a win-win scenario for us. So. Um, and it's something we will continue in the next year. So we're very excited that, that they've been such a great source of support for us. Um, we also had a lot of support from our friends of the library in our when we were initially getting the project going. Um, so that allowed us to get a lot of the incentives that I had mentioned earlier. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, our Growing Strong Readers program. And this was sort of designed to be a countywide program. And it was for preschool, daycare, and child care providers. And the intention of this was sort of to run the same way as our 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program for the families that came in. And so we were looking for a companion program to have at the daycares that they could keep track of books that they read in the classroom. And so we had a, a program they could sign up for and they could keep track of books and then they would get a cert certificate and our uh, Kenosha Association for the Education of the Unchild, um, they were going to give certifications that to daycare providers that participated. And what we found is that having another thing that they had to track was sort of, it was too much for some of the daycare providers, especially um, the in-home child care providers. Um, it was just sort of another paperwork thing. So we're at the moment, we're stepping back and kind of taking a look at ways that we can make that a little bit easier for them. So we're looking at redoing our tracking system for them to make it a little bit easier. Um, and the other thing is, is we are planning to kind of be more involved in the classroom with the program. I think um, we just kind of put it on the child care providers to take care of it. And so our plan is to do a series of classroom visits. So we would have a welcome visit where we explain the program and get the classroom started and all of that kind of thing. And then we would have other visits throughout the year and end with a graduation type ceremony for them. Um, so we're really looking for ways to, to take some of the pressure off of them. Um, so we will look into creating more customized blogs for their, for their uses. Um, another plan, um, we already offer um, early childhood education workshops. So we're looking into maybe offering some more of those that, that are specifically geared towards the, the Growing Strong Readers program. And then we have some future goals that we're still working toward. Um, we are looking into starting a Grow a Reader email newsletter. And along with that, just enhancing our promotional materials in general. 
Um, our other goal is to increase our online and social media presence. Um, we did post the pictures from our graduation ceremony to Facebook, and people really loved that they could show off their kids to their friends and all of that, and I think that was a really positive thing. So we'd like to do some more of that. Uh, we also just got a new website, so we're looking for ways to really make that a prominent piece of our website. Um, so right now we're offering like an early literacy tip of the week, but I'd like to sort of expand on that. And um, one of our biggest goals is just expanding and enhancing that Growing Strong Readers program um, because we already work pretty well with a lot of the daycares in the area and it would just be nice to, to expand that some more. And that is all that I have to share today. Um, please contact me if you have any questions or would like to know about where we got anything and how we developed any of the things that I showed you today. Ken, thanks so much. You offered a wealth of ideas and whether um, people choose to adapt or adopt one or many things, um, you offered a lot of great food for thought. So thank you for putting out together all these great slides. We did have one question in particular related to your Growing Strong Readers part, and um, we're wondering if that's something your library has has trademarked or feels like particular ownership to. Um, I feel that in general, librarians are really comfortable with, with sharing things. So um, that's a question that you might want to talk with um, Karen in the chat about specifically, or Karen contact Jen. But that was something that, that came up. Um, but I think that the deeper you look into Southland Books programs in general, you'll see a, a lot of um, similar things in terms of design and um, structure to them, but then a lot of um, recurring themes across across libraries. Um, and so those are just, just things to, to think about. And I guess if you have a particular question for a particular library, it's best to be in touch um, personally on that level. So um, I think that's it we have what, for what we have right now, Jen, but some questions might come up a little bit later. Um, I just want to say that I really appreciated how you uh, give suggestions for how you've incorporated early literacy tips into um, what you, you're sharing with parents and caregivers as well as just general displays at your library. I think that's a really nice integration. So um, thanks again, Jen. And I think we're going to move on now to our next presenter. Uh, presenter, I should say, um, and that's uh, Kathleen Larson from the Blue Republic Library in Indian Head. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Kathy, for your My name section is Kathleen of our Larson. I work at the Blue Republic Library in Blue Wisconsin. It is also known as the GE Lascachet Family Memorial Library, but that has a lot of words, so we just say Blue Republic Library. We are a little bit north of Eau Claire, about 40 miles north. Um, our town is about 3,500 people with a service population of about 7,000. So about the same size as Chris Wood's library. Um, this is our logo. I did the picture book organization thing, and the theme of that was a city. And so I wanted to incorporate the picture book scheme into our 1,000 books logo. And so I found these construction pictures online. I did pay for the clip art. So and there was some kind of agreement thing I did. But, um, so I bought the clip art and made this logo. Sorry. Um, then we made a. Please don't hear me. It fell off. I'm sorry. It is a little, it is, your audio is a little scratchy. I don't know if we can adjust that, that or if it's just your microphone, but. Um, Sorry. Is that a little bit. All right. So this is what our brochure looks like. We hand these out um, at preschool visits, story times. I do an outreach story time that I hand these out at once a year. And then um, I do the mystery reader for the 4K classes at the local school um, and hand them out there, too. So that's kind of how we promote it. We do um, newspaper and Facebook. And I visited a Head Start um, to promote also. Um, 
So when kids sign up for the Our Thousand Books program, they get a blue little, or blue, green bag. The Friends of Library donated these bags for us, so I think that was about $50. Um, inside of the bags is a folder and the logs that the people fill out with their kids. And the logs. So this is what our logs look like. It's on an 8.5 by 11, and we print front and back. So it ends up being half of an 8.5 by 11. And the front side is the log with the little construction cones. And then on the back side, the first 100 that we have a build your reader how to participate. And then um, after each log, like the 200 log, has the um, early literacy tips. And we focus on the five practices. So like the 100 has talk, the 200 has play, um, we just include in early literacy information on one side. And then I did add a spot on the log for people to um, put book titles in, and I used that later for a press release when the kids read their thousand books. So that's our log. We also have these on our website, and you can just Google Bloomer Public Library and all of our logs on the website if you're curious to see more. Um, this is our wall of fame. This is how it looked before anybody signed up on the left, and then on the right is what it looked like last week. We use buildings, and the little kids get stickers, they're just Avery label stickers, and they write their name on it, and they get a window on the building. And there's nine buildings, and so the thousand building, they get a star like on Hollywood Boulevard, so they have their name on the star on the road. And then we also put their picture above the city. And so that's part of what they get when they finish their thousand books. Um, when they do finish their logs, we don't hand out prizes every hundred books. They just get a white sticker for the city, and they get a little sticker that says you're a super reader. And they're very happy with that. They stick it to their little white folder, and they're happy with that. And I'm happy with that because it was like $3 for the stickers. So we didn't spend a lot of money on our program, which I thought was great. So um, let's see. For our kickoff party, we had Clifford come. Our friends of the library paid for Clifford. And we set up, I set up stations so the kids and the families went to different stations. There was a book station where they could read books with their kids. There was a little milk and cookies. They could have a snack. And then there was also a little um, make cookies with craft project things. And so that was in the fall of 2013 we did the kickoff. So we've been doing this for about 15 months, I think. Um, we had a party in the spring. We actually had one kid that finished by then, so we got to have a little graduation ceremony for her. Um, I did a Hungry Caterpillar theme, and we again did the station with a craft, a snack, and the books. Um, this fall, we did, if you give a pig a pancake, and we had pig pancakes, and had a few more kids that graduated, so that was exciting. And we've had 60 kids sign up for our program, and we've had eight finish. Um, we've had about 65% of kids bring back their first log, which was pretty exciting. Um, another thing that I did with the Thousand Books was I wanted to be more intentional about what I did in the library and what I do with story times. So this is on the wall in the library. I use the Build Your Reader theme, and then I have the five early literacy practices, and it was hanging in the five picture books section of our library. It's my mic. I'm sorry. And then um, every month we have a different early literacy station in the library, and so I put a little activity out, and then I put the five practices and what parents can do with their kids with those five practices and a little activity. So um, for writing, I was, I was talking about holding the pencil and making can call on their cookie, but things like that. So that was another way we could incorporate the five practices and be more intentional about our programming. And then one last thing I do, this isn't really the build a reader, but um, it's with the five practices is I have a story time handout every week and whatever I've seen is I do the five practices on that also. And so that's just a part of story time. I'm fast, I'm sorry. And then, like I said, we've been doing this 15, 15 months. Um, because of the program, we've had 254 library visits 
and the kids are really excited to come in with their parents. I think the excitement between the families and the interactions is really important, and that makes me excited about this program. One thing I would say is that you really have to stick with it. The first year we had 45 kids sign up, and this year we've had 15, and I am not pushing it as much. So I think that if you start this program, you really have to be committed to um, promoting it every year and not just the one time great program thing. So that is something I have to work on. But just keep that in mind when you think about your own programs is how you're going to sustain this program. Um, that's about all I have. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. You offered a lot of uh, great insights. And um, I don't know if you saw the chat, but there were a lot of positive comments about your graphics and your overall theme. Um, I know that your mic was a little bit muffled, but um, you still came across pretty clear. And we're just really grateful for what you were able to share. And that last thing that you mentioned about um, just, just a heads up about what it takes to sustain such a program and just to be aware that, you know, it, might have a have a fluctuating situation and just the energy required to kind of keep things going. I think it's just really sage advice, and I appreciate you um, being so honest about that because it does take a lot to get this thing started, but it, it is a, a long-term program and one that can really reap some great benefits for the library and family. So that awareness of what it takes uh, is really appreciated. So thank you. And, yeah, and now we are going to move on to our, our library pair, and that's Carrie Pinkner and Hashalia Iyengar from the Wa Waukesha Public Library and the Waukesha County Federated Library System. So um, let's check in with the two of you and, and maybe check Hi, your Tessa, audio before thank we you. go any further I'm today. I'm Carrie Pinkner. I'm the Children's Services thank Manager you. at Waukesha Public I'm Library, and I'm I'll be presenting the first Public portion of this PowerPoint and my colleague Kasaya will be presenting the second half. Our library is part of the Waukesha County Federated Library System, as Tessa mentioned. We're in the southeastern portion of Wisconsin. Um, our service population or municipal population is approximately 71,000 people. I'd like to give a, a big shout out to Angela Myers with the system office. I saw that she joined us. Webinar and um, our system played a huge role in helping us get uh, the program off the ground. Um, today I'll be talking a little bit about that and the friend support. Also, uh, our program at our library, our reading logs, and our incentives, our kickoff that we had in January of 2014, and also a, pro a preschool fund day, which we started because of this uh, Thousand Books program. Um, last year we met with, uh, or representatives of the 16 libraries in Waukesha County met with Angela and Claudia Backus from the system. Um, they were hoping to find out how they could support libraries who wanted to start the program in the future. Um, from that, those sharing sessions came the idea that um, the the best way to help would be to create a template um, for the reading log and an introductory letter and a logo. Um, the Angela met with the graphic artist, and in the upper left-hand corner of this page, you'll see uh, the logo that was created for a thousand books. It's very colorful with the bright primary colors. Um, these. This was the template for the reading log. The front was the road to reading, and then we also adapted the back uh, to meet the needs of our community. Originally, it had lines for 100 books, and we decided that we wanted to simplify it by just putting shapes on the back where parents um, and children could color in or put an X in the shape once a book was read. Um, we also asked them to list 10 of their favorite books. Um, we wanted to see what the children were reading and um, get excited about that once they turned in the reading log. Um, when we first started the program, the system offered either the template to us or several copies of the um, 
either we had buttons that were available to us, stickers, uh, the introductory letter, and the reading logs. Um, they also provided 50 books for giveaways, which was a nice start to our program. Um, any of these templates are available uh, for any of you to use, and you can either email myself or Angela Myers at the Waukesha County Federated Library System, and she will send that out to you. Um, Angela has also been working with the UW Milwaukee App Brewery to create a thousand book apps, and we're very excited about that. It should be introduced sometime early next year. Uh, this will give families the option of recording their books uh, by scanning the ISBN number, and once they read a, a certain amount of books, it will unlock an, the next level so that they can start reading more books. Um, when we originally met as a group to talk about the app, there were some concerns about how to um, encourage families to still come into the library. And one of the things I believe the developer is working on is the possibility of maybe a QR code at the library where families could scan each time they visit. Um, this app will also be available to anyone. And again, you can either contact myself or Angela. Um, the splash or the intro page that the developer did create will open to Waukesha County Libraries. Um, so the only cost to a library or system would be um, if they wanted to change that and have the app brewery do that for them. Um, when we first began planning our program at our library, we set a goal of registering 1,000 children by the end of 2016. And at that time, we'd realized we'd need a lot more funding um, for what we wanted to do. So using 1,000 as our guideline, we came up with a dollar amount that we'd need for supplies and incentives and presented this proposal to the friends. And they loved the idea. Um, what we hadn't planned for, though, was how successful this program would actually be. Um, and as of today, we have registered 662 children and have also recently partnered with the 4K sites in our area, which Kashali will tell you a little bit more about soon. Um, so we're trying to look at other ways to fund this program at this time. Um, when a child registers, they receive a green folder. Um, at that time, we take the child's first and last name. And we're also taking the date that they register for the program, because we want to get an idea of how long it's going to take them to finish the program. Um, we record the year they were born and also ask if parents are interested in providing their email addresses. We do record all of this on an Excel spreadsheet at our computer, which will allow us to easily um, import that into our Outlook so we can send out emails. Um, in the future, we hope to send out some early literacy suggestions, activity suggestions, and also um, we've recently used it to remind families about our upcoming thousand book celebration. Um, the reading log you see on the screen um, has early literacy tips in each of the green trees, um, which we found that people have really enjoyed using. Um, we also include um, the Growing Wisconsin Readers brochure, a brochure about the friends of our library, and also some brochure with early literacy tips. Um, when we started planning the program, let's see if I can change the slide easily, um, one of the biggest dilemmas was how many prizes or incentives we wanted to give out. And at that time, our funding was limited. So we decided to give a book bag after the children would have a 1,000 books read to them. Um, at that time, we wanted, we thought it would be a good idea to, that it provided advertising for our programs. And it's been great to see families come in with those book bags. Um, they also receive them a free book at the end once they've read 1,000 books. Um, and the only other thing we offer then is a hand stamp in between. And we were a little worried about that, that it wouldn't encourage reading. But we found that the children really like to receive that hand stamp, no matter what it is. Um, we did have our kickoff on January 25th of this year. We brought in one of the favorite storytellers, Kathy Luck, and she did a special story time that revolved around the 
six early literacy skills. Um, we had about 110 people attend. We had refreshments and some um, early literacy stations set up that I'll show you in a minute. But I do want to share this story first. Um, I was at the reference desk while the story time was going on or the kickoff was going on, and a young mother approached me and asked what was going on in the room. And at that time, I explained about the program and asked if she'd like to sign her toddler up in the stroller. And she looked at me surprised and um, mentioned that she didn't think reading to her child was appropriate at this age. Um, so at that time, I, I just knew that this program was going to be so worthwhile that it would give us an opportunity to really talk to parents about the importance of reading to your child at a young age. In this next slide, we have some of the stations that we set up, and there's lovely Kashali in the upper right-hand corner. Um, but some of the things we focused on was the letter knowledge. So we have the cookie tins in the upper left-hand corner with the magnetic letters. In the lower left, we have, uh, we're talking about narrative skills and the make and take puppets. And we also had a puppet stage set up next to this table. Um, we have the laminated placemats in the upper right-hand corner in the Play-Doh, where children could form the shapes of the letter with the Play-Doh. Um, and then in the lower right, we talked about some of the nursery rhymes and phonological skills. And um, they could either make a puppet, a uh, star puppet for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. There's also a lamb there for Mary Had a Little Lamb, and uh, or for Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Um, so again, we're, we're looking at ways to teach parents some of the things that they can do with their children. Also something that came about from this um, program was our preschool fun day. What we're again really trying to do is not only promote reading books to young children, but we also wanted to take this opportunity to educate the parents about other things that they could be doing uh, with their children. So. Um, after attending the workshop in Stevens Point this past, past February, we, um, we came up with the plan to offer preschool fun day. Um, in each three class session, uh, we focus on, again, an early literacy school skill. In the first three classes, we focused on narrative skills. We held a puppet show, um, meet and greet the puppets offered make and take puppets, and then had a puppet stage set up where the children could hold their own puppet shows. In the second um, three classes, we talked about letter knowledge. We read alphabet books um, and then had four or five stations set up during each class where um, we taught about the different letters and shapes. So in this one, they're doing the alphabet construction site. Um, and I don't know if you can see in the picture, but what I really thought was great about this was the parents really got involved and were working with the children in the top part of the slide. You can see a father, uh, I believe he was talking to his child about the letters and his name. We had bookends set up where they could place the magnetic letters on the bookends. In the next one uh, class, we had the Lakeshore search and find bags. Um, in each one, there's the letter of the alphabet and then maybe items that started with that letter. Another big thing we found was they really loved the first letter of their name. So we focused on that a lot in their name tag and then also um, anything we did during that story time. In this one, we're using the laminated alphabet placemats again with the Play-Doh. Um, and now I'd like to hand it over to Kashaya, and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the other things that we're doing right now. Hi there, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about passive early literacy activities we do every month, starting last February after our kickoff. Um, we uh, have a passive program growing um, throughout the year, and we have a passive early literacy table. And each month we have um, an alphabet and activities related to that alphabet. For example, um, you see uh, with letter A, we created an indicator. Um, what we do is we supply all the um, 
materials they require to create um, the activity and um, sometimes we have more than one activity. Uh, for example, um, with letter B, we had a bird and also we punched hole on B so the kids could um, uh, weave the yarn through the on letter B. So uh, we go through about 300 to 400 die cuts per month, depending on the month. And it's been received very well from the ch uh, children and from their families. Um, for example, once we even saw some dads sitting and doing um, these activities while um, the children were in the program room. And one of our patrons actually said to us they like to visit the library very often, and especially to collect different letters every month so that they have a letter in their house and they've been collecting it. So it was really nice to know that. And um, we do have a 4K partnership. Um, shortly after the kickoff in January, the directors of the 4K sites in our community wanted us to present this program at their next meeting. They felt that this program meets their vision and mission of their organization and a partnership was born. I presented this program to 4K teachers and directors in the summer and there were about 15 4K sites in Waukesha and this was received with lots of excitement from the teachers. We decided to give out 800 folders in the beginning of fall to the 4K site and um, not register them until their first visit to the library after they received the folders from their teachers. Our materials um, are also available in Spanish, which were translated by the 4K sites. The 4K folders are of different color um, than our regular ones so that we can tell them apart because when the parents bring them, we can register them um, easily. The 4K folders, uh, the inserts, the first reading log is also of a different color. Um, um, and when the parents come back to the library, either with their reading log questions or anything regarding this program, um, we explain to them and then we register them. And we also put their um, name of their organization. Um, and these folders contain early literacy handouts and tips for the parents, a reading log, and an introduction letter. And um, we are very grateful to our friends of the library and Wixlist for their sponsorship and continuous funding for this program. And in this photograph, as you see, um, we were invited to participate in the Pizza Polka and Art in the Park program. And this program is conducted by the 4K, web, um, 4K sites. And it was conveniently located right outside our library building. And all the teachers from each site is encouraged to participate in this program so that the families of the 4K children can visit each station and learn about what's offered in the community. In this photograph, our staff, Melanie, is registering kids, and this turned out to be a great program for us in spite of a very warm day. Our booth was very well attended, and many people registered on the spot for the 1,000 books program. We had displayed our early literacy-related materials and games for the children. Related to this program, we also and did something different for our Bright Beginnings programs this year. We have been offering this Bright Beginnings programs twice a year to the preschool teachers, caregivers, and parents. Um, we do this once in spring and once in fall. And this program is very popular, and we get about 90 to 100 people all together for both sessions. In this program, we talk about new and old books in the children's literature. They are too good to miss. This year, we geared our program towards 1,000 books so that we can educate and share our books that relate to the six early literacy skills. We talked about picture books that lend themselves to puppet shows, which would be um, uh, like for narrative and phonological skills. Um, our staff showed how to use some puppets and adapt a picture book into a puppet show. In the end of the session, teachers were given supplies to make their own puppets, like paperback puppets and stick puppets. In the afternoon session, Carrie and I both talked about books related to six early literacy skills and activities for babies and toddlers. Even though most of the books would overlap for the six early literacy skills, we separated them by each skill and showed them activities that could be done with the books. We showed them some uh, rhymes, flannel board stories, finger plays, and other things that are doable that relates to six skills. In the end of the session, the teachers could make um, 
shapes book um, that was given as a kit. In the kit, we had flannel cutouts in different shapes and colors, and the teachers had to put them together as a book. We really enjoyed doing this activity and thought they can use it in their classrooms. We provide continuing education credits to teachers who require them, and it's free. And they also get refreshments, and it's lots of fun. And finally, our celebration. We are celebrating our first 1,000 books graduates on December 6th, which is this weekend. We have about 15 children that have finished this program. And all the people that are participating in 1,000 um, books program will be able to attend this program. This will be our yearly celebration every year in December to celebrate children that have finished 1,000 books. Professional performer Dana McCarthy is going to provide jump up family music this year, and we will provide refreshments and early literacy activities. These activities will be on different stations that will be manned by 4K teachers. Along with doing the activity here, the kids will have the opportunity to make and take some activities too. We will have graduates come to the front and receive their certificates, and of course, these kids will be wearing their graduation hats. This is going to be a lot of fun for the whole family. We immensely enjoy the program and learning many do's and don'ts along the way. And here's the contact information for Carrie and I. And please do not hesitate to ask us or email us with any questions or clarifications regarding this program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie and Kashalia, for all of the details that you provided. Sounds like you have a really robust program um, with a great start happening at your library. Um, if you missed it in the chat, in, in the chat, um, there is a handout that these two have provided, and I will link to this online. Um, the same place where you'll find the recording for this webinar. So if you want to look specifically at their introductory letter and samples of their um, recording sheets that will be on that PDF that I will um, post in about 24 hours. Also, as stated by all of our presenters, feel free to get in touch with them directly with any specific questions um, that you have. Um, Karen Kishalia, there were some things that were pointed out in the chat that you may not have seen, but just a lot of comments about your your passive programs and ways of involving families. So there was a lot of good feedback about that. and. Also, as part of the overall Waukesha County um, Federated Library System Thousand Books effort, um, uh, Angela had shared something about the app that's in development. So that's something to stay tuned about, especially for a previous comment about how some families have a hard time keeping track or not wanting to record things um, you know, um, by paper. So that's something to, to think about as well. So, um, a couple things I want to share before we open it up for just general questions um, is that the, there's a lot more information about a thousand books program as well as just general early literacy things on the Growing Wisconsin Readers blog. And so you can find the link to that below and you can sign up via email if you'd like. Um, and specifically this fall there have been a lot of guest posts by librarians across the state sharing very specific things that they've done in their libraries related to early literacy. So if you want more photos or more ideas of what people are doing, I would I would check out the blog. And you can certainly search by different tags such as thousand books to look for specific posts on topics. Um, I also want to direct this now to a couple questions that have come in on the chat. So I'm just going to ask um, any of our presenters would feel like they would be willing to, to tackle one of the questions. Um, so we'll first go to Denise's question, which is, have any of the presenters found an average time frame that children finish the program? Um, so we'll start with that one. And I, I'm guessing that we're going to hear quite a range. So if maybe each presenter could just share um, their general observations about time frame or length of completion. Hi, this is Carrie. Um, um, we just, we're still in our first year. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Well, we've only had. Oh, well, we're still in the first year. <laughs> 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 I think that's Jen. Why don't we start with Jen? And okay. 
say. Um, we're still in the first year, so I don't know that we really have enough information to really have an average. Um, we had 10 do it in, I think the fastest was probably about five months, um, but most people took the entire seven months up to the August graduation to, to kind of carry. Thanks, Jen. And now I, I would say similar. There have been a few that have completed maybe after six months, um, but we have about 15 now out of the 600 who have signed up. Yeah, we had in about a year. We had 12 in one year, and the earliest one was maybe about five months. Okay. Yes, this is Kathy. Anybody we else had attend? one finish in about five months too, but most of them have taken about a year, I would say. But we only have been doing it for a year and a half, so. Okay, so it sounds like basically a range from five months to a year plus, and definitely more people signing up than actually completing, but it's still getting the early literacy message out there, so that's, that's great. Um, Another question came in um, regarding if any of, of you all have um, surveyed parents about their experience um, in the program. So do, do any of our presenters have experience related to that or any just general feedback that they've received, whether anecdotally or through a, through a structured survey? This is Carrie. We haven't done a formal survey, but we have heard from um, many parents how this has just encouraged them to read a lot more. Um, one of the moms who talked to us, her child is going to a speech therapist, and she was excited to tell us that um, the speech therapist really applauded us for what we were doing and um, said it has. A, she feels it's encouraged the child to um, express herself a little bit more. Thanks, Carrie. Anybody else have anything they want to sign on? Okay. Another question that came in was, what is the best time of the year to begin the program? I know that one of our presenters mentioned that they started in January. I've heard other people start it in the fall. It's a kind of a reminder that um, whether kindergarten is one, two, three, four, five years away, there's no better time to start reading than the present. So. Um, maybe each of our presenters can just say when they happen to launch their program. Uh, this is Jen. Uh, we launched in January, so we had a lot of sign-ups then. And then it sort of died off a couple months after that. And it, we did see a resurgence in September right as school was starting. So I do think that's a good time to kind of get remind people of the program and all of that. Yeah, this is Chris. We also started it. We started in fall, and because the grant, that's where it fell. But I think that's the time of year because everybody's back in school and we have to win both. Hi, this is Kishalia, and we started in January. Um, we had lots of sign-ups, and uh, we promoted it on our Facebook and also at schools. And we see word by mouth, and because of our um, book bag, um, it has become a very popular program, and people ask about it. And um, we sometimes do um, approach people when we see a little baby or new parents coming through. We uh, approach them and talk about our program to them so that they can sign up. So it's been a popular program so far. Right, this is Kathy. Um, we intentionally chose to start in the fall because it is a before kindergarten program, and so we thought if we promoted to 4K in the fall, they would have an entire year to finish their thousand books, which ended up being about three books a day. So we thought by giving the full year to finish the program, that that might be a little more incentive for parents to even try, so we didn't feel so overwhelmed. Great, thank you. And I think that we just have um, a little bit more time, so I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to answer one of the questions that came in from Krista about the app. And um, yes, there will be an app. There's um, some notes in the chat um, from Angela from Waukesha, and that's going to be coming out in 2015. So watch the blog because I'm sure that I'll be posting more information about that there. 
And the other question that we have is from Sue, which is um, asking basically about uh, continued library use, whether graduates or participants in the program are using the library more, and are there any tracking efforts specifically for new patrons uh, related to this? So I don't know if any of our um, presenters have any in insight on that question. Well, I'll just say that because um, we're a smaller library, I know a lot of our patrons mm -hmm. really well. Most of our participants are regular library users. Yeah. There have been a handful, maybe out of the 60 that are new that I don't recognize. So it's exciting to even just reach like five more for us, especially in the small community. Hi, it's Carrie. Um, we we aren't able to really keep track of how many new patrons are coming and be because of the program, but what we found is by this partnership with the 4K sites. Um, we are seeing people come in for the very first time. Um, so we're hoping that grows a little bit from those um, 800 folders that we gave up. Well, thank you, um, Kathy and Carrie, for those insights. Um, from a small library to a large library, I think that you can see that um, Little efforts do have make a big difference, whether it's just gaining a few new people or just getting more of a word out that the library is an inviting place to come. And um, I just think that it, it just furthers the message about early literacy and the role that parents and caregivers have in, in that early childhood development and all the support that public libraries offer to them in the, the process. Um, we are going to wrap it up here. and. Um, again, just as inspiration, you could have your library name here if you start up a program. So be sure to get your name added to this Google map so that we can see more of these blue dots around Wisconsin. Um, there is one more webinar in this fall webinar series, and that's next Tuesday on December 9th, same time, same place. And that's going to be focusing on early literacy activity areas, another really popular thing here in Wisconsin. So watch for more information and a reminder about that. I'll be sharing the link to this recording as soon as it's ready in about 24 hours. I'll be posting it online as well as one of the handouts from today's presenters. I just want to thank our presenters so much again for their time and um, energy putting these slides together and um, sharing all of their insights with us today. And thanks to our attendees, whether live attendees or those watching the recording later, thanks for your interest in this, and I hope that you'll be in touch. Thank you.